Hi everybody, this is Rick from Studio Spades and today I'm going to show you how you can gain more control over your Explosion FX um, domain simulations so that's primarily used for uh, smoke, fire, explosions, uh, that kind of stuff but um, yeah, this technique will also work on normal emitters with particles. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good way to uh, handle your business. All right, so I'm uh, starting off with a, a sphere, a icosasphere, and give that a explosion effects source tag, which means that if you put it in an explosion effects domain, the pink thing the pink box you see around the source tag uh, around the source sphere you get a nice fire simulation going with, with some decent default settings now I choose a Icosa sphere because the um, um, explosion tag emits from the polygons of the object and Icosa sphere has um, all the polygons are the same size So, in order to gain more control over your simulations, the secret is using a flow field because you uh, a can see what the influence on the simulation is uh, thanks to the uh, the box that the flow field um, adds to your simulation. You can see the the green hairs I might call them. Uh, on screen right now and they're influencing the explosion effects. Now on the modifiers tab in your explosion effects drag in the flow field or else this will not work. It's very important. The field will not influence the explosion effects by default. You have to drag it into the modifiers. So once you do that, you can get crazy results, um, not only with normal particles, but also with explosion effects, as you can see. And the beauty of the flow field is that you a can see what you're doing, thanks to the the yeah thin lines you see on the screen right here, the, the, the green field which is influencing um, explosion effects. You can tweak that display setting as well. Uh, I'll do that later. Right now I'm just caching the simulation in order for you to um, yeah in order to uh, give you a more consistent playback. And all right now that is done. You can see the the field influence in it here and uh, yeah the, what I was saying the other beauty of the flow field is that you can stack effects so right now I'm using a, a, a noise shader which basically gives this random effect on top um, of the normal explosion effects fire simulation after the cache what you might see is that you get this sort of sliced look to the smoke you can uh, see it not everywhere but th yeah there's this sort of layered and sliced look and you might think hey um, maybe my resolution is too high on the uh, uh, voxel field for the explosion effects but I turned it down to I think 4 now in order to fix that slice look you have to go to the field um, option and select where it says direction and then change that to velocity that will fix that that sliced weird look that you see in the, the center of the, the smoke right now Sort of, sort of on the bottom left, um, near the, the center axis mover, 
or the axis mover so yeah I'm, uh, I'm caching it again right now I switch the field direction to velocity that should take care of it combine that with a low voxel number in your explosion effects and you will get a um, pretty sharp explosion effects a crisp I might I might use crisp uh, you can get a pretty crisp smoke simulation that just looks nice follows the flow field and uh, doesn't have this uh, sliced weird low quality look all right and this is how it looks right now when you switch that field direction to velocity much more um, what I was looking for this looks so much better um, yeah so it, what you see is a fire simulation but it follows the field you know and I think right now I have the field influence to 50% you could set it to 100% or 20% whenever you like um, the lower the number the less it will follow the field so it might look more like the original fire simulation um, so it's a great way to either add a predictable flow to the explosion effects um, either very subtle to make your fire look more realistic or you can completely influence it um, with the field and make all kinds of stuff weird stuff and I like weird stuff so um, definitely recommend using the flow field basically for everything because well almost everything I mean y you can see what you're doing most people might start a simulation and just mess around with some modifiers and just hope um, it all <laughs> it all goes well but if you feel you have um, not a lot of control over your simulations use the flow field always that's just whatever you do with with particles or explosion effects always use the flow field and if it doesn't work with that you know then um, um, try, try some other things but if you want control over uh, over the simulations yeah flow field is the way to go Alright, so like I said, you can stack the effects in the flow field um, with the add drop down on the right. You can um, yeah, add shaders, add splines, add random effectors, turbulence, curl, all kinds of stuff. So right now I'm uh, adding a spline and I might be able to make a sort of like a fire tornado look. I don't know, I, I just want the spline to influence it, so uh, yeah, let's try it. Let's give the uh, explosion effects field uh, the back view so we can see clearly uh, how sharp the voxels are, how small the voxels are. Um, and I'm also fiddling around. quickly I said all right so uh, I guess that didn't work let's see what I messed up um, I think I forgot to drag in the spline into the object field yeah that's it down here below dragging the spline as well and then you'll see it uh, affect the field and yeah as you can you, you might expect it expect it to make that fire tornado twist um, if you look at the d direction the lines are going so let's cache it real quick if the cache is going too slow 
just make sure you um, make the voxel size bigger. I tend to work with a voxel size of 4 centimeters and then use the up res feature um, to 1 centimeter. Uh, the up res feature is fantastic because it'll um, still be quite true to the original simulation but it will up up the the crispness and the resolution of it and if you would change the normal voxel size from 4 to 1 so not use the up res feature but just um, yeah make a simulation at 4 and then at the end when you're done and you want to render you set it to 1 for increased quality it'll mess up the simulation because it'll use a different voxel size that yeah, completely recalculates everything and adds way more smoke than you might uh, anticipate. So uh, yeah, use up res. It's a great feature that uh, will keep more of the original simulation intact, but it will also make it more beautiful and crisper. So like I said, the flow field um, looks like it's making that fire tornado twist uh, to it now. You could also make this effect stronger or maybe add a n another layer on top of this like a, a slight influence of randomness maybe that would be cool and uh, yeah not bad for a first attempt so like I said maybe we should add some turbulence to it Oh, maybe we should add some random to it, increase the size a bit. Alright, so uh, that's a bit too much randomness. I forgot to tweak the strength of the random field, so now it's uh, basically all random and all that helix spline so let's turn down the strength of the randomness cache this again a lot of caching today Ugh. I thought my computer was quite fast but sometimes that X particles cache just shatters my dreams almost there all right so I guess not really what I was expecting but pretty cool nonetheless and it still follows the uh, spline of course anyway so yeah uh, flow field I can't repeat this too often if you feel like you're not in control of your X particle simulations, you're just not using the flow field, that's <laughs> that's it. You should almost always use this in your workflow. It gives you maximum control, not only over explosion effects, like I said, but also normal particles. So I'll just quickly add a emitter here and you will see it go into the field. Oh, I messed up somewhere. I'm just... Scale this bad boy down. Oh, way out of... It also works on normal particles, as you can see. So, you might be able to add some I don't know fiery embers to this fire tornado here that would be cool but just for demonstration purposes I'm uh, doing it this way next to the fire it'll be easier to see you might able to you might uh, use the age parameter and a gradient 
to uh, give these particles more of a fiery look. I think I messed up the order. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You you can uh, you can figure that out for yourself. Anyway, this was Rick. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, leave a like if you learned something. Share this video with your motion buddies if they uh, if they if you think they should watch this. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, of course. That'll uh, make it easier for me to make future videos. And I uh, hope to see you next time. Take care.